You're watching Weekend Sundays. Here at Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right, well, slowly I'm getting through the old mates Q&A and advice videos here at Backyard Tech and this one pertaining particularly to the 80 series Land Cruiser. A couple of weeks ago, a viewer contacted me via Facebook Messenger. They have a uh, early to mid 93 80 series GXL. The only difference being is theirs is a five speed manual compared to my four speed auto. And whilst they've got their head around a few bits and pieces with the 80 series, they're slightly confused about how the full-time four-wheel drive system works in the 80 series Land Cruiser. Okay, let's see what I can tell them. Anything AV. Most things IT. Heaps of stuff about the 80 series Land Cruiser. Got questions, need answers and advice? This is Old Mate's Q&A and advice from Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time here at the Backyard Tech channel, also Q&A and advice as well. I haven't got the phone with me, so I can't remember who it was who asked me for this video, but someone did. Um, okay, they have a mid 93 80 series so pre the update model um it's a 1f zfe uh it's a five speed manual um i think it's if it's pre night if it's mid 93 it'll be an r12 series anyway um they don't quite understand the full-time four-wheel drive system and i'm a little bit surprised they've asked me because there's plenty of videos here on youtube about how it works um, okay, most of your 80 series is by default with full-time four-wheel drive except for a couple of the bottom models like the G and the GX, okay, so mine spec, which were part-time, so front-end hub locks. They also had a part-time um, transfer case. Um, so from, I think it's from RV6 all the way up to VX Sahara, um, your 80 series is full-time four-wheel drive regardless of your engine. Okay. Um, the VX Sahara is a classic example. It's a full-time four-wheel drive with a 1.8. I think the first of them came out with 1HD FTs and then the last of the 80 series VX Saharas came out with the um, 1HD FTE. Um, Essentially, the way full-time four-wheel drive works, there's a couple of components to it. Obviously, we'll start from the front and move back. Now, I can't go out to my 80 series and do this because it's pouring. The first thing you'll notice about a full-time four-wheel drive is the fact that there's no hub locks. Now, with the 80 series, as we've seen when I've worked on my front end, the hub lock is a chunk of cast steel that ends up going onto the is and is splined on to the axles okay so we know with with the 80 series you have your axle shaft right that comes out of your diff into your cv and then you have another splined end which is your axle that goes onto your hub lock and that's just a, a you know you can't unlock your hubs your hubs are permanently locked to the drivetrain all right and you have your diff you have a shortened tail shaft that goes to the center diff, which is part of your transfer case. Now the 80 series, everyone seems to think diff lockers are new. In actual fact, the 80 series, now it, it's not every 80. The Marlin and either the VX or the VX Sahara had a viscous center diff lock, but we're not talking about them. The GXL has an electronic center diff lock. So diff locks aren't new. They're new for differentials, as in front and rear, but they're not new pertaining to the 80 series because the 80 series has a center diff lock. Factory. Okay. Now, 
You'll notice with a with a 80 series in, in a lot of cases that you only have two ranges in the transfer system, high-low. Now, there are part-time conversion kits out there where you can convert your full-time 80 series to a part-time 80 series. And there's various arguments surrounding the fact of increased fuel economy, no change to fuel economy, less wear on the drive line, same amount of wear on the drive line, um, better handling, same handling, you know, I've been told I should actually do a part-time conversion, and I'm not. So I'm not going to bother. Um, the way it works is you come out of your transfer case, your high-low transfer case, into your center diff. And that center diff works pretty much the same way as any other diff does on a 4 It's not exactly all that different. Now, with the 80 series, you know you've got HNL. High, neutral, low. Okay. Neutral. Now, as you know, and this is the same for the manual, if you put the transfer case into N, your car will roll because your entire drive line is released, be it from the manual, be it from the auto. Okay. Full-time four-wheel drive basically means all wheels, all moving all the time in high and low range. Okay, it's not too dissimilar to all-wheel drive in high range, but as we know, all-wheel drives don't necessarily all have low range. Okay, now when in high range, you obviously don't need your center diff locked up because if you lock your center diff up, there's no slipping which means all your wheels are turning all the time at almost the same speed, depending on whether you've got a decent LSD in the front or the back, all right? So really all four, all, all four wheel full time, all it means with full time four wheel drive is your front end's locked up all the time, almost in sync with your, your gearbox and your drive line. Okay, now people here have told me I have to do conversion to part-time and I am saying stuff it, I'm not. Um, you've got less chance of breaking your front hub in a full-time system compared to a part-time system, as in your hub lock. You probably still break the front end, but you, you're less likely to break your front hub lock in a full-time than you are in a part-time, all right? And everything's always splined in every anyway. You'll often find though, with the 80 series, you can tell when the center diff lock's on. Okay. And that is you have stuff all steering in high range. I know this, I've done it myself. Right. Basically, it's like a LSD, limited slip diff in the center of your vehicle. Okay, so when you're in high range, the front diff will slip a bit, so you can go around corners of, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80 k's an hour, or what have you. Um, you can park the car, so on and so forth. If you're in high range and hit that center diff lock, good luck turning your wheel tight, because it's like it's like having a, 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 a diff locker in the front of the front end diff. You have very little steering left and right. You can do it, but it's difficult. Well, it's the same with the 80 series. And good luck steering backwards. In the 80 series, when you go into low range, the center diff turns on anyway. Okay? But in high range, you can put your center diff lock in, especially if you're going along a dirt road and you need that extra traction on all your wheels at 80 k's an hour. The PDR is a classic example of where you would use high range with a center diff lock. Now, you Queenslanders will know what I'm talking about when I say the PDR. You don't always need it, but after a wet season up there, it probably doesn't hurt to run the center diff going along the PDR at 80 k's an hour. New South Wales people will know what I'm talking about as well. Those that don't, there's a road in FNQ, far north Queensland, called the PDR, or Peninsula Development Road. And a couple of people I know of you who've got 80 series say that the center diff lock in high range going along the PDR is actually a good idea, especially when it's wet. Um, 
when you're in low range, okay, and you're going, you know, through mud or something, you know you're in low range within your center diff lock locked up because you'll hear your front diff. I know other AD owners who say the same thing. They can hear the front diff. And you'll know you're in you, you'll know you're in low range with the center diff lock kicked up because unlike a manual, the auto is well, the hydraulic auto is a little smoother than the electronic auto when it comes to off-road gear change. And secondly, I think it's the hydraulic auto. If you lock it into second gear, it'll take off in second. Whereas mine, if you lock it into second, it'll go one, two anyway. However, which is why we us auto owners often will need a bit more of a run up to something so we can get enough speed up to get it into second gear before we start getting into the messy stuff. So what you look at with the 80 series uh, at the center, right? So you got your engine, gearbox, transfer case and center diff. Okay, you'll have a tail shaft straight out down the center of the vehicle, that goes to your rear end. You'll have the offshoot, the um, offset tail shaft that flies up to your driver's side. And in that back end, as you come out of your transfer case is your center differential. And it's not too dissimilar to the a, a, a diff, any diff. The only thing is, is it provides slip for high speed, for high range four wheel drive. Or if you're on a dirt road, you can hit the center diff lock, it'll lock up the center diff and you get power to all your wheels all at the same time, but you lose out in your steering. And if you're in low range, you get all the power, all the torque to all the wheels. It's probably the best way I can describe it. There we are. Job done. 80 series video. Have a good one.